time share with you some information on the history of our club. The history of our club, uh, this information I gathered to a book I uh, obtained from the club, is Friday evening, September 12, 1952, 3X Navy types sat in the Woodstock Royal Canadian Legion Canteen having a few 10 cent drafts. <laughs> Their discussion centered around the fact that the Oxford County had a large number of people who had chosen to become members of the senior service. During the war, why not can't we have a reunion was the question. Why not? The wheels were in motion. Jack Gimmel accepted the chair, Tom Dent secretary because he had a typewriter at home, and Bob Bryson agreed to help contact prospective members. They called themselves the Oxford County Ex-Naval Personnel and, meet, and held meetings in the Legion Bar Room during the next 10 months. On July 15, 1953, the first annual meeting was held, where nearly 50 members, the election officers were as follows. President Jack Gimmel, First Vice Russ Edwards, Secretary Tom Dent, Treasurer Bruce McMillan, Register Bob Bowman, Register Ingersoll John Eckhart. It was also moved by Gordon McKee and seconded by Bob Bowman that the organization be renamed the Oxford County Naval Veterans Association, carried on November 4, 1953. Also on November 4, 1953, Jerry Easton became president. And I'm proud to say Jerry's here with us tonight to pass president. <laughs> the second president of this organization, and we're celebrating our 65th anniversary. Isn't that a feat? Yeah. 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 In 1955, Tom Dent was looking at a piece of property which was approximately four acres. He approached his father, Tom Bent Sr., to see if he would consider giving the property to the Navy Club. He agreed. His property, our building and pond, sits on today what we have here. Tom Bent donated this property. The first clubhouse was the Canada Cement Company former field laboratory building purchased for one dollar. <coughs> it cost another three hundred dollars to have it placed on site. The association hosted the third annual Canadian Naval Association reunion in 1957. And I looked at the memorabilia this afternoon with Mary, and there's a, a thing out there if you look at the memorabilia after, that 700 people attended that reunion in 1957. Also in 1957, it was agreed that the association, or that associate, uh, Army, Air Force, and social members be accepted. Dues for 1959 were $2.50 for regular, $3.50 for others. Oh. <laughs> in 1964, ex-rens were given honorary membership with no clubhouse and no voting privileges. Yes. <laughs> and some of the guys are still saying, yeah. <laughs> uh, in 1979, believe it or not, ladies were permitted in the club rooms, but only on Friday and Saturday nights and on very special occasions. In 1986, the bylaws were revised. Affiliate membership came into being, allowing son or daughter or former armed service personnel to become a member. David Stock explained that any female ex-service personnel could apply for associate membership. Also, any female of age could apply for social membership. And lo and behold, the shock wave hit the gents. In 1989, Eleanor Easton was elected as publicity chairperson. So we're coming forward. In 1991, it was decided to hold a battle of the Atlantic beside the pond and in the parking lot. The ship's bell of the HMCS Woodstock next to its ensign on my right, 
is indeed the original ship's bell. This has been verified by several members of the original crew of that ship. There are several identifying marks on the inside of the bell that don't exist on the bell at the Branch 55 Legion. The bell at the Legion was used on the ship when she was a weather ship on the west coast. I've tried to connect 65 years of history very briefly. I suggest you read the history of a club, the first 40 years, there's a book in the back in our memorabilia, and I wish the club a happy 65th anniversary, and may it have many, many more successful years. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah.